Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Rock Shop. Today, we're going to be talking about which power wrapper you should buy or something along those lines. Stick around. Okay, today, we're going to be talking about which power wrapper I would rebuy. I don't think it's fair for me to tell you which one you should buy. So, let's talk about what I would buy. Now, I've had power wrappers for a very long time. Um, I started wrapping with a flex coat hand wrapper. And it was fine, and that's the one I want to talk about first, because that's the one I have never owned. Um, from what I can see in the pictures, it looks fine. But when it came down to making the decision between the flex coat and an Alps, I chose the Alps specifically for the aluminum track. The flex coat hand wrapper I had was made out of particle board. It was pretty solid. I never had a problem with it, but I know I'm rough on stuff, so I felt like having the aluminum track would make a difference. Now, I don't know if this is an actual Alps power wrapper. This model of power wrapper is sold by many people with many different names on it. It could be American Tackle, it could be Alps. Uh, there's a couple more. I've seen this exact track these exact uh, stands, roller stands, with different names on them. So let's call it an Alps, and then we'll call this one, you know, the Pro, the CRB Pro. Now, on the Alps, I do know that the original chuck head unit was crap. Absolute. You could not keep it tight on the rod when you tried to clamp it down. So what I did is I bought the upgraded chuck, which is this stainless steel beast right here. This is by far the best chuck I have ever used. So <clears throat> with the Alps, you know, I know these roller stands came with it. They work fine. This one is so old. I need to replace the bearings because it's getting very wobbly. I don't remember which power wrapper because I have three like this. <clears throat> the one in the dirty side of the shop where I do a lot of my cork work. And Nathan has one in his rod shop that he uses. Um, one of them came with these locking where the wing nut would lock these down in place. Another one came with this spring loaded design, which is fine, except it's not that secure. I mean, it's great for quick in and out. I use this one a lot now as a dryer more than anything else. So I can take a rod off of my main power wrapper with wet epoxy after a few minutes, flip it over and put it right back in dry. And this has become basically my primary dryer second stage wrapper. For many, many videos, you saw me wrapping on the Alps with the upgraded chuck and my CRB Pro Gen 1 sitting uh, in front of you collecting dust. This one as the Gen 1 was horrible. I hated it. I had spent the money on it because it looked really cool. I thought it was going to be a nice upgrade and there were a few things that I really liked about it but the negatives were one I couldn't immediately go to dryer mode it didn't have a dryer motor on the original uh, headstand. And the pedal was horrible. It was it was like an on-off switch. It was just absolutely the worst pedal I had ever seen. So, waiting on Gen 2 to be available, this power wrapper sat right there. Now that I got my Gen 2 head unit in and mounted on, which honestly, Took me about five minutes is four screws you take four screws out you put four screws back in and you're done now these were pretty good stands these are okay these are by far the best stand as far as really locking a rod down and still having it spin very freely with the roller stands locked down on it it, it, it turns nicely so now in my opinion if i had to buy another power wrapper it would be the gen 2 crb pro i like that it's higher it's a little further up off the track than the alps uh, just gives me a little more room under a rod uh, 
I love these stands. They are a little bit, it takes, it takes a little bit to get used to them. Um, a drop of oil, lightweight machine oil, makes them work much better. They take a little bit to get broken in, but once they broke are broken in, it's very easy to adjust and actually lock a rod down and still have control of it. In summary, the Flex Coat, honestly, I don't have an opinion of, it looked fine. This brand, which is Alps, American Tackle, Pack Bay, and I think I've seen one more, it's exactly the same. As long as you put the Alps upgraded chuck on it, which brings it to the same price as the CRB Pro, then you're fine. Now, the only significant difference between the two is the roller stands. And these are just so much easier to work with, which is why I'm now wrapping on my CRB Pro 95% of the time. So that's my opinion on power wrappers. Do you need one? I did a video on that in the past. You probably don't, um, unless you're building a bunch of rods. But I bought one because I wanted one before I needed it. And once I got it, my production went up so much that I don't know how I ever wrap without it. If you're only going to wrap a couple of rods a year, you don't need one. If you're going to wrap 10, it might be okay. If you wrap 100 plus, like I do, um, it's absolutely necessary. Now, before you guys go, over at ultimatebass.com slash forums, I have created a rod building discussion forum, which is a great place to ask questions. You can start your own post, your threads, ask questions, and you get input from a lot of different people who are very knowledgeable about the rod wrapping business, I guess. Membership is free. I own it. None of your information will ever get shared with anybody for any reason whatsoever because I'm a big thing about privacy. Um, there are very few advertisers, so you're not going to get bombarded with Google ads. But it's a great, safe place as a young rod builder to come hang out with us and share your work. Anyway, that's it for Power Wrappers. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.